Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next event in your 5G Journeys series. My name is Jenny McLaughlin. I'm Accenture's Northeast 5G lead. And I'm pleased to welcome you for a discussion around 5G, edge, and cloud technologies. Today, I'm happy to introduce my friend and colleague, Teresa Tung, and we will be discussing 5G, cloud, and edge. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So good to have you. Can you take a few minutes and just tell us about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Jenny. So as Cloud First Chief Technologist, I get to incubate the future of cloud. What's going to happen tomorrow, I get to do that today. And this really is important because as new technology is coming out, a lot of it is about applying it to create new experiences. And so we really don't get to do that unless we experiment with it. And so that's really my job to really awesome. get to apply it as first of its kind. Awesome. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just start at the basics here. I talk about 5G day in and day out with all my clients. I'm sure you talk about cloud. I kind of never talk about 5G without also talking about edge and cloud and how it relates, but I feel like it's a bit confusing out there. Can you give your perspective on why these conversations merge? Yeah, I talked about, you know, really inventing the new experiences of tomorrow, and that's really what 5G and cloud do together, right? It's really about coming together as a combinatorial effect with these two technologies to really bring intelligence into our everyday systems. So you can't do this without cloud because cloud makes it super easy for developers to imagine experience, build an experience, scale an experience. And you can't do this without 5G because that everyday system that's happening, it needs to be controlled, right? You need to make sure it has the right version of software. It needs to make sure that the data that is coming from it is able to be read. And then you can do something about it, either to power AI or to make an action. And having a quality of service guarantee is really what 5G has made uh, possible that we couldn't do before. So Teresa, I love your example about edge compute and French fries that you talk about on your blog. Can you just tell our audience a little bit about that? Yeah, this is a problem that I'm sure all of us can get behind. It's a crispy fries. And so, you know, part of that is really about the timing of the fries. You, you don't want to place them in too early and then you have these old stale fries. And you also don't want to have your customers wait for a long time. And so this is a fast food chain and they were doing analytics all along. So within the cloud, they could take all the data from all the stores and really forecast down to the minute level how many fries to cook. Right. And, and this was really important for their supply chain and to make sure they had enough fries because you definitely don't want to run out. But it's really at the edge, right, in the store using the smart kitchen, the point of sale, so that to, that's where they're determining exactly when to cook the fries. So that way, whether it's an empty afternoon and it's slow or you're behind an unexpected rush of families after a Little League game, it can make sure that everybody's fries are crispy. That happens at the edge. Yeah, I think as you start to think about 5G, the edge becomes almost anywhere. So while edge compute now is applied certainly at locations, once you have kind of 5G network, edge can be wherever your devices are, wherever data needs to be collected, whatever number of devices you're collecting it from, and then making those types of decisions. But I just love the fast food thing because we were always talking about you know, remote surgeries and industrial type applications and that it just catches my eye every time. So I love that. Can you talk a little bit more about these other technologies that are further enabled by 5G and all the cloud advances we've had? Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that I've realized when talking about, again, 5G, edge, AI, robotics, that these are individual technologies, but the change is really not, you know, the technologies themselves. It's this combinatorial effect that includes introduces a new topology, right? So it's not technology, but it's a topology. And that topology is that, again, that that continuum that stretches intelligence, uh, a cloud-like development environment, everything's connected, right, via a quality of service guarantee into our everyday systems. And so the experiences that we're gonna see are gonna require Internet of the Things to see. It's going to require AI to analyze, and it's gonna require robotics or pushing containers to the edge to act. It's gonna require 5G to make sure all of this works seamlessly and um, you know, we, we don't mess things up, right? But I think you know, that's, it's not just one technology by itself. 
if you only had one, um, you're not getting this vision and we're not getting the experiences that I hopefully brought to life with the uh, French fries example. You know, every time I talk to you, I'm, I'm, I have to confess that I steal, steal something in the way you've described things. And today I'm going to steal topology. I love that. Um, we talk, I use the term architecture, right? But as soon as we talk about architecture, everybody goes to a certain space of what we understand technology architectures to be. It really is a topology of different things coming together. The whole kind of value chain and how you, how each technology impacts the other is really changing and evolving. So I'll be stealing that one from you, Teresa, along with the French fry example. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. I love it. But what do you see as some of the applications of the 5G and edge combination coming together and uh, in which industries? Well, it, so more than manufacturing, which a lot of it will be automated, I really think that the biggest impact will be upon the human experience. So whether it's the consumer experience or the worker experience, that's really going to be the change. And so I, I I, you know, used the retail example, right? The retail example, typically when I go to the store today, um, I've, like many of us, have done much more digital shopping during the pandemic. So I still drive to the store, I park. Only after do I park, do I click Teresa's here, which which space I'm in, and then I wonder how long my stuff is going to come out, right? And it it's it's not really a seamless experience. If we think about what could happen with this new continuum, right? With this new topology. As soon as I place my order, almost like in a reverse smart driving car share ride, they should see Teresa coming, right? And then they should be able to see, I don't have to wait till I'm actually in the parking spot to say I'm in par parking spot five. They should actually see where I am. I should see that Jenny is actually the one bringing my stuff and she's getting the milk, so it's cold, right? And then, then we just kind of know what to expect. And I think that's you know a change that that happens maybe in retail, but whether it's it's health, um, it's insurance, right? It's it's really much the, the human experience. Like it, insurance is a great one. So whether you're the person filing a claim or you're a worker, there's a lot of things that you you have to think about. And so being able to take a photo of you know the scene and, and making sure that you could connect to the best worker and the response to that that sort of situation that really changes again that human experience yeah i think um you know the consumer applications and enterprise applications will be very different but the expectations will be set and they will merge you know we saw a lot you mentioned the pandemic obviously um you know what we experienced is that our expectations of what enterprise life and work life would be started to really blur with what personal life and so therefore the kind of cool things that we all do with our games or with our devices are our expectation in everything now it isn't just about oh if i sit down to play a game and i put a headset on i expect x now i expect that's those same capabilities or that kind of coolness factor everywhere and then when you take it on how it can actually impact the value to the customers and also the revenue streams of the enterprises, that's where it starts to get really exciting. And I think we're going to start to see that more and more. So totally agree with that one. Can you talk a little bit about um, kind of Accenture and how we're positioning? I know you and I have, have talked a bit about, obviously, our cloud first initiative, um, Edge and 5G coming, coming together. Can you talk a little bit about how we're approaching this with our clients? Well, I, I really look at it as industry led in the same way that we talked about it. It's, it's really about human experiences. So whether it's, you know, um, you know, retail, health, insurance, automotive, even manufacturing, really thinking about that human experience. This is this in a digital factory. We might be doing a lot of robotics and automation. But the, at the end of the day, you need a plant operator, somebody with decades of experience in that field to really feel comfortable to install right, new, new sensors, adding the analytics there in a very easy way. So how do you give that person the trust and you know the enablement that democratizes a lot of that use? And so there's an experience factor, again, and even just the rollout that really gives trust so that that person at the end of the day can make the right decision and even trust that this um, you know, the process that we're going to automate is going to work and improve their factory. And so really a lot of what we can do as Accenture is to help our clients reimagine re and dream big because we have the 
the ability to know these capabilities. So I sometimes talk about, um, you know, my kids watch a lot of Harry Potter movies. And so the magicians, right, and, and knowing the spells and the tools, they need to learn that so they know how to apply it right, in the right situations. And so in this case where we have these new experiences, there's network, there's 5G, there's uh, public-private 5G, there's Wi-Fi, right, that it's hard. It, there's cloud and this new cloud stack that's emerging, whether it's AWS Outpost, Azure Stack, Google Anthos, right? It's all this weird, new, exciting stuff that people need to know. And um, the infrastructure, you know, the hardware itself, there's GPGPUs, FPGAs, neuromorphic quantum. How do you apply that? So again, knowing the spells or the tools, if you will, is really what Accenture can do well. And we can complement that with our client's ability to dream big, right? We, we know how to apply it to make that happen. I totally agree. And I'm going to steal a Harry Potter example as well. I love that one too. But it's really um, about not how do we, here are all these technologies, what do we do with them versus what is the industry need? What are you trying to achieve as a business and objectives? And then with the spells, right, or the the kind of uh, the formulas, if you will, behind them, then you can start to say, if this is what I need to achieve, or this is the growth trajectory I'd like to have, or I'd like to open up new businesses, I have all of these technologies to my avail to make that possible. And we can, you know, work on, we, we always talk about workshops and bringing together, but it really does require a lot of minds and a lot of different expertise to come together, as well as the actual business objective trying to achieve. I think sometimes you can get lost in the technology of how cool the technology in and of itself is, but if you're not applying it to a business objective, it's kind of all for naught, so to speak. So I love that. Um, so I, I want to, first of all, just say thank you for for doing this with me. I always enjoy talking to you as I, I always learn from you, and that is the best thing that can happen to me in a day. So I appreciate that. Um, and I think we'll might be calling on you to uh, if our audience wants to have um, additional conversations or has any further questions, we may uh, we may be setting up some time with you if that's okay. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I think reimagining that experience is is really again that embedding of the future of tomorrow today, and um, would love to join such a discussion. Teresa, thank you again for joining us in this event in the Your Five G Journey series. And to our audience, we hope you enjoyed it and that you have a great day and you'll join us again for our next session.